First thing is we have to help people discover their stories. They're not looking for them. They've been presenting facts and features and technology, and they haven't really been looking for the customer usage stories, the creative use of the product stories in different industries where they can go out and expand somebody's mind on what's really possible. So discovering stories, then we teach them to build them. Now, when you teach people to build stories, the thing about stories is you might be doing a 30-second version. You might be doing a two-minute version. And if you're playing golf or out to dinner, you might have a 10 or 15-minute window to tell that story. Same stories, but there's this version, this version, and this version. That also ties with how well do they know you, how well do they trust you, how connected. The more connected you are, the longer your stories can be. Which gets us to the third one, the inventory of stories. Each salesperson needs an inventory of stories. Then we give them some practice on telling stories, on being in the story versus out of it, and using metaphors and emotion. And then the final piece is tending the buyer story. We found that storytelling alone wasn't enough to connect. We had to teach people how to be much better empathic listeners. And by empathic listening, we mean that you not only got the content, but you got the emotion behind the content. You got the feeling behind the content, and you can summarize both together for your buyer. And the buyer says, ah, this person gets me. This person understands me, not just the information. And so we use a card system. And I'll tell you why we use a card system. But we have colors, yellow card, green, white, blue, and red. Yellow card, what's the desired conclusion? conclusion of the person you're telling this story to. People don't think that up. But we make people write down, at the end of this story, we want this person to trust me. They want, we want this person to believe that my company takes better care of their customers than any company they've worked with. They want, we want them to believe that they get how hard my job is and we have something that can help them in their job. So desired conclusion, and then we have them build the resolution first. Red card gets built first, even though it got, gets told last. Then we go back and have them build the setting, make sure that we have got a character in there, at least one human being, and then we can do the complication and the turning point. So the reason we do it on cards with bullet points is most people, especially salespeople, if you give them a script, it sinks them. What's the difference between if you went to the symphony three nights in a row, they were playing the same Mozart pieces three nights in a row, how close would each of those uh, performances be? They'd be mighty close. Why would they be so close? Because everybody is playing that sheet music being directed by the same director. What's the difference between classical music and jazz? You went and heard a jazz combo three nights in a row. Even if they had the same set list three nights in a row, it would be different every single night because it's spontaneous. There's, there's, they have to stay within certain beats and chords, but there's room to be spontaneous. And so what we're trying to teach salespeople to do is to be jazz storytellers with bullet points, and reading the connection, and reading how much time they have, and then having optional anecdotes that they can roll in and out. The only time we want to see a story written word for word is if it's going to go up on your website or if it's going to go into a piece of collateral. But for the most part, when we're helping salespeople build their inventory of stories, we give them bullet points and cards. Guess what the number one complaint I heard from solution selling and customer centric executive customers of mine over the past 30 some years. Number one complaint, the bottom 80% quit doing it within two weeks of the workshop. Why? Can't 
because they were out trying to take somebody through a need development, questioning, solution development model without being connected first. The reason the top 20% become the top 13% are those people intuitively know how to connect and they're smart enough to not start their solution development model until they first have a connection. And so it's just like those spin sales calls where we would watch the buyer back away and the sales manager would have to jump in and take over the call. What he's really trying to say is, because the seller was trying to use this SPIN questioning model without having a connection first. And most buyers are not going to sit still and let you take them through the nine boxes until you're connected with them. And yet, you know, with most people trying to implement these methodologies, the managers are, you know, saying, all right, we just put you through this training. We want you to go out and use the nine boxes or use solution development or Miller Hyman or whatever model you're using and follow the process and the bottom 80% who intuitively don't know how to connect anyway dutifully go out and try to execute those sales methodologies and what do the buyers do? They start going like this and after a couple of weeks they quit using it because it didn't work. So why story though? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about brain science but why story? And we started looking into story and the impact stories have on people's brains, emotional brains. For 190,000 years, two-legged beings have been on this earth. And for the vast majority of that time, there wasn't even written language. And so everything we learned about friends, enemies, dangers, emotion, rituals, or th oral through story. Children remember stories. I tell you, and I was talking to John Saul last night about this. I've got three kids. They're 26, 30, and 33. And the one subject that all three of them hated all through school was history. That's terrible. Kids should love history if it were taught right. But what's wrong with the vast majority of history teachers? They're making them memorize names, dates, and places instead of telling them stories. People remember stories. And not only children, but adults do too. Adults remember stories. When you hear, once upon a time, or... John, I'd like to tell you a story about another vice president of sales. When you hear a lead-in to a story and you start to anticipate that a story is going to come, the paradox is that in, in one hand you're saying, ah, I don't have to do anything, I don't have to make a decision, I can, it's safe, I can relax, I can enjoy it, it's a story, yet at the same time, I better pay attention this could be important. It might be something I need to remember. This is programmed into us over 190,000 years. What a perfect state of mind for a sales message. They're relaxed. They're not feeling pressured to do anything, to make a decision. Yet they're thinking, hmm, I better pay attention. This could be important. 